There's an old saying that says, they have the churches, we have the faith. It's a quote attributed to St. Athanasius. And over the course of these last few months, I consider that statement to be very, very true. But I don't think that it's more true than so much so, as you can see right here in Corpus Christi, Texas. Welcome back to the traditional Thomas. For those of you tuning in for the first time, welcome. My name is Nicholas Cavazos. It's good to have you here. The SSPX Save the Latin Mass Community in Corpus Christi, Texas. That's going to be the subject of today's show. Going into this story, it's actually very cool because I get to witness in real life some of the things that you're going to see transpire in this article. So let's go ahead and take a look at this article and talk about how why this is very good news and why other Catholics should consider um, supporting the SSPX as well as also potentially even moving to places where the SSPX is located. Reporting here from LifeSite News, Catholics flock to SSPX after Corpus Christi Bishop cancels diocesan Latin Mass. Cancellations are down 29% at St. John the Baptist Parish in Corpus Christi, Texas. Since the cancellation of the diocesan traditional Latin Mass, Bishop William Michael Mulvey in April. What's interesting about this story, in my opinion, is that it's going to show us two things. Number one, it's going to show us the length and width on which good, faithful Catholics are willing to go in order to receive the ancient faith that was passed on from our Lord and the Apostles. But two, it's also going to give us hope in which we can practically implement this uh, and what we should consider to do in supporting the SSPX and in supporting traditional Latin masses. Side note, there's a bit of this story that's interesting that I got to witness that I'll, I'll mention it in a second. So looking at the news article here, it says here, Corpus Christi, Texas, right? 11 weeks after Bishop William Michael Mulvey of Corpus Christi, Texas, eliminated the traditional Latin mass at St. John the Baptist, the parish collections are down 29% as Catholics flock to the nearby Society of St. Pius X Chapel. Right here, we actually have a quotation from a good friend of mine that I've met in real life. Finally, you know who you are. The homeschool co-op and children's choir are currently in limbo. A former parishioner who attended the TLM faithfully on Sundays and weekdays integrated as a part of her children's daily homeschool routine. Youth ministry is in limbo. We are waiting on the newly assigned priest to start July 5th to determine the fate of these programs due to the lack of funding. The figures bear out. According to bulletins, the parish website with two missing in June, the average collection at St. John the Baptist has dropped 29% since the final TLM in Easter Sunday right of this year. The first 15 weeks of the calendar year showed an average weekly collection of $14,357, while the post-TLM weekly average has just been over 10 grand, right, as the nine monthly bulletins show. What's interesting to me is that when we look at the state on which the church is in, we see people leaving by the droves. We see hundreds of thousands of people apostatizing in Germany. We see bishops' conferences throwing themselves into communist, liberal Marxist theology on left and right, whole bishops' conferences doing this. But yet, the faithful, the normal Catholics, those who are wanting to practice the faith, of their ancestors are being kicked out of their parishes. But just like in secular society, when we say go woke, go broke, when we look at Target, when we look at Bud Light, when we look at all these organizations that are collapsing financially, we can also say in a certain sense, inside of the church context, go woke, go broke. As I've been saying before, and I'll say again, right? I've said on the show before, I seriously do think that Catholics, faithful Catholics of goodwill, not out of a spirit of, a spirit of anger, but they need to start boycotting 
institutions inside of the church, which are no longer going to be one supporting Catholic doctrine, as it was always taught and practiced, but are openly advocating for the changing of church teaching. It goes on in here, and it talks a little bit about the apparent beneficiary right now of the money, right, is the local SSPX chapel, which has uh, risen from 30 Catholics a week, right, or just once a month, to more than 200 with plans for an added weekly mass beginning in July, right? We did have to buy much bigger collection baskets, so that has been very encouraging. That's a great bit of news right there. It says right here, further down, it says, uh, this is a gentleman, Andrew Greenwall, right? He says this, he was a former parishioner at the diocesan TLM before it was canceled. Because of the influx of the people that formerly attended the diocesan Latin Mass at St. John the Baptist, the Society of St. Pius X starting next month will be providing the Mass every Sunday except for the first Sunday of the month. And that is where I will be attending with my family. While I cannot speak for all the former parishioners of St. John the Baptist, there are many of us there, he continued, I think that there may be many few who are wary of the SSPX because of misinformation being spread about them, but I am happy that they are here. I went back once to my former church, and I do not plan to return. This next phrase, I think, here um, is very, very interesting. A little bit further down, this gentleman, his name is Greenwall, he notes specifically what happens to diocesan Latin mass parishes once the Latin mass gets kicked out. He says right here, Greenwall noted how social media postings for the parish have been purged from photographs showing the traditional Latin Mass. Furthermore, the parish apostolate that promoted the TLM, the St. Michael Latin Mass apostolate, has been suppressed. Traditional practice such as male-only altar servers and kneelers for Holy Communion have been abandoned. The priests appointed to the parish have no interest in the Latin Mass. He says here, the loss of beauty and noble simplicity of the ancient rite was a huge loss for the parish, for the persons who attended the TLM, for the diocese, Greenwald said. Those devoted to the TLM who were doing nothing wrong, the parish was burgeoning and lively, and was, using any objective metric, experiencing a revival that was contagious. Absolutely agree. But what is the listening church going to do? What is the accompanying church going to do? As I've said before, the quote, listening church has selective hearing. They don't care about these families who are very much so interested in handing on faith that was given by Christ, given by the apostles, and passed down from generation to generation and practiced the same way. This is a very interesting story. I was actually here live for this portion of the story. Lieutenant James uh, McFoss, I hope I'm saying that right, forgive me if I'm not, but thank you for your service, U.S. Navy, explained that he and his wife's nuptial exchange and mass of matrimony were affected by Bishop Mulvey's decision. They were scheduled nine months in advance, and in February 2023, he and his wife met with the former pastor to ensure the original date for their traditional rite of marriage was secure. While Father Vasquez, right, who was the former priest at the Latin Mass Parish there, was not confident at the time, he thought that any restrictions would occur until May of the, at the earliest. However, changing circumstances accelerated those plans quickly. I had a phone call with Father Vasquez on March 31st, who had been notified by the bishop that the Latin Mass would end on Easter for the diocese, with no exceptions for accommodating for our scheduled wedding. He says, any serious consideration in prayer, my wife, after serious consideration in prayer, my wife and I decided to get married that Sunday, Palm Sunday, three weeks earlier. I watched this actually live take place because whenever I heard about the cancellation, of this Latin Mass. As a fellow Texan, I have to go down and support my fellow Texans who are being unjustly persecuted. So I went down there and I witnessed what I thought was just going to be the traditional Latin Mass, the right, the pre-55 right for Palm Sunday. But before watching that took place, I saw arguably one of the most beautiful experiences of my life, which was this gentleman who you see with, uh, noted in the article and his now wife go down the aisle and get married, right? They didn't have any music. They didn't have any dresses, you know, like a wedding dress. They didn't have groomsmen. They didn't have bridesmaids or anything. It was just a simple rite of marriage. And I just remember thinking to myself, you know, this is something that a bureaucrat in Rome will never understand. A bureaucrat in Rome who's only interested in pushing some far leftist communistic agenda so that one, he looks good in the eyes of the secular world, right? Look up first, first John 2, 15 through 17 if you want more information on that. And then at the same time, wants to bilk in money behind the church's back. These bureaucrats will never understand the simple beauty 
of faith, the childlike faith of the people that go to the traditional Latin mass. He will never understand that. And the reason that he'll never understand that is because fundamentally, many of them have their eyes totally in darkness. As same scripture, as, as scripture says, St. Paul, the love of money is the root of all evil. And we see this clearly happening all over the place in the context of the upper echelon. Last thing I'll note right here is he says right here, I just thought that this was kind of sad, this line right here. It was incredibly frustrating for us who have been forced into such an uncomfortable situation. Our situation was not viewed or considered with any sympathy, with only with only the solution that was provided to us, just to pivot to an Ovisordo wedding and be happy about it. It's exactly. It's pretty much just a, it's a model of shut up and take it. Shut up and obey. Shut up and do what we tell you to. My friends, we will get to the point in the church, I do fundamentally believe, in which we will see a rainbow flag at the Vatican itself. And we will see people online coping and saying, well, you know, we're just trying to make safe spaces for them. We don't believe in homosexual acts, but we do want to make sure that they feel welcomed, etc. What welcome is there for traditionalists? What welcome is there for Catholics who want to practice the faith of all time? We see Catholics not being allowed to celebrate the traditional Latin Mass in diocesan parishes, not being allowed to say it in the context of pilgrimage at St. Peter's Basilica. The Sonorum Pontificum pilgrimage is not even being able to say Mass in, in the Basilica of St. Peter this year. But what is happening? Half-naked homosexual dancers for the gathering of world fraternity is allowed to get up and do a dance openly critical of the church's position on human sexuality. What we need to do, my friends, is recognize that there is an absolute double standard, and we need to wake up and recognize that that double standard is real. It is encouraging the OC, the SSPX, coming out and providing for the legitimate needs of the faithful, the spiritual needs of the faithful, those needs which are helping us reach final beatitude with Christ our Lord. So what do we do, right? What do we do whenever we see our Latin mass parish is getting canceled? Well, I have a couple of things that I think we all need to do. First and foremost, on a doctrinal level, we cannot back down. We cannot stay quiet. We cannot shut up. We refuse to do so because if we decide to roll over, then we deny our Lord. We deny our Lord fundamentally because this is not being done to us out of an agenda for unity in the true faith, but this is being done to us out of an agenda of getting us to comply with and to go along with secular forces, secular spirits that are infecting the church to where the church is nothing more than a place for modern man to express his own religious sentiments. We absolutely have to remain doctrinally pure. Second, I think that everyone needs to consider moving to a place where there is a traditional Latin mass that is not going to be canceled. That is generally going to be either an Ecclesia Day community and or, I think is the best, SSPX chapel. SSPX because you're probably not going to get it canceled and shut down. Uh, there's pretty much a 0% chance of that happening. Third and final, we need to realize that we are in a war not against the hierarchy. We should never be angry at the hierarchy in the context of vengeful anger. It's okay to have frustration. It's okay to have a righteous indignation. But the difference between righteous indignation and sinful anger is that righteous indignation knows how to control anger, use it for good, and it's reason telling the passions what to do, as opposed to reason being led around by inordinate passions in the other uh, context. But we need to absolutely recognize that we're not at war against the hierarchy, but we're against a war against the devil. We are a war against the forces of darkness that are inside of this world. The devil and his fallen angels, right, the demons, are at war for the souls of men, and so are we. We are at war for our souls, the souls of our children, and the souls of men that are around us. But we have to recognize that the devil does not take a time out. He does not go to the bench. He does not sit down and eat a water break. He is trying every single moment to drag as many faithful and as many lost sinners down to hell with him because he knows he's defeated. So this is the only chance that he has. But we now have the opportunity by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to go out there and to change the world for good. And how do we do that? The first and foremost way we do that is by praying the rosary. Our Lady said, Our Lady of Fatima said in 1917, that unless Russia be consecrated, then Russia will spread her errors throughout the world. The errors of Russia, according to Sister Lucia, is communism. And we see communism, maybe not economic communism everywhere, but communistic Marxist mentality spread everywhere all over the world. The U.S. was not hit with economic Marxism, although it's starting to experience it, of course. But it has definitely been affected 
by Marxist ideology in the context of the family, context of human sexuality, in the context of race, in the context of class, in the context of gender. We see Marxist thought everywhere. How do we combat this? By praying the rosary every single day. Dr. Kayla Marshall, right? He has, a, he has a saying where he says, pray the rosary every day, right? Fully agree with that. But I want to add on to it for a second. I want to add on to what he said. I think we need to be praying 15 decades of the rosary every single day, the whole Psalter of Our Lady every single day. It can take you about 45 minutes to an hour, but it's absolutely what we need because we need it to save our own soul because we need to realize that we are being assaulted by demons. We are being assaulted by the enemy at every turn. But at the same time, by the power of Our Lady, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we can crush the devil. And only through the power of the rosary can the world truly be saved. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and give this video a like. And if you will, subscribe. If you're not a part of the traditional Thomas channel here on YouTube, we'd be glad to have you. If any of you guys have any comments or questions, I'd be glad to take them in below. Charitable comments are welcome. Crazy buffoon comments. Go to the dumpster. You know how it goes. Um, but yeah, and also, if you would, please support the work of the Traditional Thomas. You have links in the description below, or you can go over to patreon.com slash traditional Thomas if you'd like to donate. Your donations would be very much so helpful as we continue to try to build up this show, change our layout, change the settings, work on everything to make better and better content as we're going forward. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. And as always, may our Lord bless you, our Lady keep you, and St. Joseph watch over and protect you. God bless.